is um who's not on this credit? Um Eric. Who's that up on the phone right now? It's Jeff Moore. Oh, it's Jeff. So we're missing Eric, Terry. Yeah, we're missing the Eric and Terry. I'm texting them both. Uh, no, we're not. Hello. There's our fearless leader. How are you? Tell him that Terry's home. Does she need the panelist number or the? She said she should she call it, but she couldn't see her. Do you I'm going to email her the info. Or just, or I can text it to her. I just resent her the email and I'm about to give you the info as well. She says they're saying the meeting hasn't started. Okay. She was right. I didn't hit broadcast. Try again. Wait, she's saying try again. Should she have she's, a participant? Yeah, they're, they're in now. They're she, in. She's in there now? Yeah, ending in 453. Yes. Okay. C call back because he's saying now he's got it. So go ahead. How weird that they could get in, but she couldn't. I think it's because she's on the public side. Yeah. Who are you trying to get, Terry? Yeah, she's trying to get in. She's calling back again. Yeah, we have four attendees. So if any of the attendees want to be able to talk, 
just press star nine on your phone and I'll give you permission to talk, but the microphone is muted at, by default. We have five attendees. And she should be in there. She texted me, said she's on the call, but. You see her? Yeah, I see three three numbers. Uh, the end in four six four, four five three, and six eight two. The numbers that have called in. Okay, but do you see the one that's hers so that we can unmute her because we're going to need her for like. For what does her number end in? I'll unmute. Um, hold on, I'll check. I think he said four five three. Six eight two. Six eight two. Okay. You see her? Yeah, I just added six eight two to the okay. call. And she's not okay. Can, can yeah. you hear me now? Yeah, okay. Terry. Yep. Hey, we're gonna leave you unmuted, but can you mute your phone when you're not talking so yes. that but yes. that way you can sure. vote and you can uh, enter the discussion? Yes, okay. ma'am. Yes, okay. Eric, I think we're ready now if you want to start. So, who are we missing? You've got, you've got K. Paul, you've got Terry, you've got Mark, you've got Javier, you've got Sarah, you got, I don't think you're missing anybody, are you? Okay, so K. Paul's on? Yeah, K. Paul's on. Okay, so I didn't see him on there. Yeah, I think he's on. Yeah, one final reminder, press star nine on your phone if you want to okay. raise your hand. I'll give you permission to talk. Okay, let me close the door. Hold on a second. Okay, so we'll call the Monday, the 27th of April, 4B meeting to order at 4.38 p.m. All members present. Do we need to have a public forum? Yes, sir. So at this time, we'll open to a public forum. Anybody that would like to speak, please follow the prompts. Uh, we have a message from Chris Nair. Uh, he says, uh, I'm getting used to the system. Not sure whether my presence is required on this one or not. Chris Nair. But you haven't sworn him yeah. in. Um, <coughs> just tell me. Yeah, you know, contribute to the conversation, but we'll swear him in. Um, do you want me to unmute his microphone? added it to the panelist section. Okay. Hey, um, Hello. Mr. Weiss, you might want to do a roll call real quick just because you do have people who are not identified on the screen, just so you can make sure you, you know who's actually on the meeting. Okay. Okay. So, Member Bradford, I can see. Member Anthony, I can see. Torres, I can see. Eldridge, I can see. Member Shatter, present? Yes, Shatter's here. Member Paul, K. Paul Cash, I should say. <laughs> K. Paul, you there? Shows that he's muted. Can you unmute him? Is he muting himself? Did he call in? It is that one up there, Cable. Oh, yes. I just unmuted him. Okay, try again. Member Cash, you present? Okay, Paul, are you there? He's not muted. His number ends in 3464 if he's using his cell. I don't know. He's okay. showing up on the screen. 3464. Okay. There is a 464. I'm going to allow the 464 number to talk. Okay. 464. I'm here. It just said I was unmuted. Okay. okay. Good job. So we do have 100% present. 
And then um, we have comments from Chris Nair, is that correct? During the open forum? That's your new member. So we're just um, allowing him to speak if he okay. wants to participate in the conversation, so. Okay, any other comments? Barring any comments, we'll close the public forum at 441 and move into discussion regarding potential grants slash incentives slash loans. Uh, Mr. President, 4B members, uh, we discussed at the last, last meeting last week uh, some sort of business retention incentive program and we said that we would come back to you all with some suggestions, uh, more information. So we reached out to some of the other local municipalities and compared some of their programs. Uh, you know, depending on funding levels, they, they ranged from 10,000 all the way up to $250,000, just depended on who all was involved, um, whether it was strictly city funds, municipal funds, or, uh, or uh, 4B, 4A type funds. Um, locally, a lot of the programs are in the $2,500 to $10,000 range uh, for the max. And most of the programs tend to focus on job retention and funding levels are tied to the number of employees. Uh, additionally, most of the programs require that the businesses stay in business for a specific time after receiving any funds. Um, additionally, most of the programs uh, don't allow home-based businesses, nonprofits, chain restaurants or chain retail as eligible recipients of the incentives. Uh, you know, things to consider uh, in terms of in comparing all of the other programs, uh, things like giving priority to businesses that have frequent or close contact with most of their customers. For instance, nail salons, barbers, uh, hairstylists, things of that nature. Uh, businesses exhibiting larger amounts of employee reductions. Uh, businesses with larger uh, revenue losses. Uh, other things to think about, uh, performance agreements with each business that accepts the funds. Uh, in terms of when we do select, uh, when a business is selected for funding, who makes that selection? Um, and then just some uh, other general questions uh, on the performance agreements. Is uh, 4B gonna want to approve each one of those individually? Is the council going to approve all of those? Or would would you all be receptive to allowing the town manager execute those agreements? Um, some of the other options, we know that Colleyville did a gift card program. And I know that member Anthony had sent in some information about uh, uh, some sort of coin program. So, and has some it, yeah, additionally, Terry, uh, Miss Member Shatter has ideas as well. So, with that, I'd, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Did you have any more information about the gift card program? Was it Colleyville or was it? It, it, yes, it was. It was Colleyville. Um, I spoke with, I believe it's their, it's either their, I think it's their assistant city manager. Uh, their program was $35 increments and 
they printed postcards and they sent those out to their residents. Uh, I asked some general questions about fraud and things of that nature. Uh, but their, you know, their program was geared strictly for Colleyville businesses. And from what I understand, they did, they have actually sent that program out twice. Um, and that was yeah, sort of an initial, an initial response to the uh, restaurant side. And they have ideas, uh, at least, in that discussion, they talked about additional programs coming later this summer. Were they happy with the response? Did they feel like it was an effective program for them? I, I believe so. Um, you know, they, I think at, at the time that I discussed it with them, they had, they had a significant amount um, I want to say the number was like $77,000 that had been returned back to them in terms of uh, had been cashed in. Can you share with them how they have a means to control fraud? So um, another one that we don't have it listed on here, what was the um, city of Rockwall or Rock uh, Rowlett? And theirs is pretty straightforward, short and simple. I kind of like it. Um, I like the one from Georgetown in the example. I don't know if Terry wants to take over for managing it like the chamber does down there. I'm assuming their EDC and their chamber are combined or something. Obviously, it's a lot larger dollar amount. Um, but to me, keep it simple. Leave off the second S is going to be the best system. And whatever we can do to benefit the small businesses of Sunnyvale across the board. Um, I like the ones where they just had a two pager, pretty short guidelines, and it was a grant. Um, anything more complicated, I would say that would go to being a loan. But to me, I like the idea of the smaller size grants. Um, <coughs> and I don't know what the max, you know, on this, I know we put up to 100,000, but. Um, and then also, I wanted to get some feedback from what we found out from the library contacting businesses of who seems like they need the most help or what's type and size of business. But this is, oh, sorry. I thought you, this is Terry. I have a question. So on the gift card, was that just restaurant? Your yes. Uh, okay. Let me see if I can find that. Because while you're looking for that, my concern is that we're just helping the restaurants and not all the small businesses. So I received some information um, from the Wills Point EDC, and they're doing a bingo game, which is really cool, where you like um, do a takeout order from a restaurant, you schedule a future hair appointment, a future nail appointment. There's a lot of things on there that I think the chamber can do. You know, we don't have a whole lot of funds, but I think we can do this bingo thing and what we would purchase for the prize would be restaurant gift cards. So it'd be reaching out to a lot of the small businesses and then we would give the, the winners of the bingo game. We could do it a couple different times, uh, restaurant gift cards. And that's something that the chamber can do. So I was thinking as far as the EDC, more of grants. So we're reaching out to more than just the restaurants. So you're granting money to the individual businesses and then the people that play bingo can win a restaurant gift card also at a local business. Yes, and that would be something that people would do. To, to answer y'all's question about the businesses, I was going through their list and it's predominantly restaurants, but there are... Um, it looks like there are some salon type businesses, spa, uh, florist. Counseling services. And cleaners. Dry cleaning. But for the most part, they were restaurants. 
Because they're the ones that are probably open right now. Correct. Yeah, also, I the email that I sent to you guys um, today, Susan Burton, I did not send to the rest of the board. Um, so I don't know if you, did you guys get, I guess you got it. Because um, it was pretty close to the meeting. Mm -hmm. So, Jeff, do you want to chime in at all about kind of which programs you have comfort with legally? Sure. So um, this one that she's referring to, like where we would print um, like a coin or a chip and then people could use them at local businesses. So, any advice you can offer while I'm reading this? Sure. Um, uh, you know, early on, you know, a few weeks ago, I guess at the last meeting we, we were, uh, you know, I, I think I briefly discussed that, you know, the governor's office was looking at waiving certain requirements under the act and, and you know, given his latest order to, that he issued today where he's starting to open everything, uh, you know, incrementally, um, I, don't, I don't expect any of the, the requirements to be waived under the statute. And, and the statute generally requires that that we have performance agreements, you know, we, like here, we have to have a public hearing. This is scheduled for a public hearing, uh, you know, do the performance agreements, publish notice. You got to wait 60 days before you fund it. And I, I think previously I talked about that. I, I think performance agreements, you know, if, if it's per job, you know, that, that sort of thing, uh, 500, a thousand, you know, what, whatever y'all want to do per job, uh, you know, for certain businesses, that's the way to go. Um, as far as the, the, the gift cards, uh, I, I guess Colleyville, I mean, that's a little unique uh, that, uh, you know, I've never heard 4A, 4B do. Um, and, and, you know, I guess, I guess where we are right now, it seemed like for Colleyville, it only benefited those that were open, those that were closed, you know, that, that they weren't the, the beneficiaries. Now that, may be changing given that the, you know, the governor is going to allow certain businesses to open to 25% is what his latest order is, is saying, 25% capacity. Um, and, and so, you know, that, that kind of changes it, but I, I've never seen that sort of gift card under the 4A, 4B statute. And that, I mean, just for those of you who might not have watched the, the governor's press conference today, he did say that by May 1st, certain businesses could open, um, including movie theaters, malls, um, businesses like that, if they stayed at 25% capacity, which is kind of what some of our big box, like in hardware stores have been doing. Yeah. But certain businesses cannot open at all, and that includes salons, nails, nail salons, um, gyms, bars so i mean we on our list i it did jump out to me that that was one cr uh, category we had a few of them say they needed help so that's one group that they're not even going to look at being able to open until the middle of may and so you know jeff's point about allowing something where people can get help you know sooner who aren't open to receive any kind of you know commerce from our residents could make sense. So I just wanted to make sure that I shared that information in case not all of you saw it today. Yeah. I just forwarded the, the Rowlett one that I was mentioning to all of y'all. So hopefully it showed up in your email. And that's where, to me, if we do uh, come up with a grant program and use some of these templates that are already out there, the um, some of them are better written than others on this list that you sent, Susan. Yeah. Um, two of them stood out. I can't remember which one now off the top of my head other than Georgetown and maybe Denison. 
Um, you know, and one of them was flat out grant and other ones had kind of forgivable loans potentially over time and some were balloon loans, but, um, and I didn't, you know, wanted to know what everybody thought about just doing grants or doing a combination of grants and loans or even for staff or food. Because to me, whatever is the simplest and has the largest impact is going to be the best system. Jeff, Jeff, do you have any issue with grants versus forgivable loans? No, I don't. Yeah, if, if I may add, uh, um, you know, kind of when this first, you know, when this whole virus, you know, pandemic issue came up and how, how could EDCs assist, uh, my thought was, you know, uh, you know, structure some sort of performance agreement if, you know, the governor wasn't going to waive it. Uh, that would be pretty nominal that, that the business would have, when they could, get open and then stay open for a certain period um, and, and that they report jobs. Because uh, under state law for a performance agreement, there's, there's supposed to be it's disjunctive. It could be capital investment made and or jobs created or retained. And so we don't really have a cap capital investment here being made, but you know, the, the retention of jobs is, is what we're after. And when we provide public funds, we, we should get some sort of bargain for exchange and that could be the, the retention of jobs. So, uh, you know, the, the performance grant, everybody says grants or loans, you know, the way it would be structured would be that it, under an agreement that if you do these certain things for whatever time period, you know, six months, a year, it depends on how much money you're, you know, assistance you're providing, uh, uh, that, you know, they report the jobs, maintain it, and if they do, uh, it's not repaid. It's basically a grant. So a grant, grants are doable, but they've, they've got to do something in exchange for it. And, and that would be, I guess, the job retention. You know, the gift cards, that kind of runs problematic in that, what's the exchange for that? You know, it's, uh, uh, um, and, and so that, that's where legally I kind of hung up in that, looking at the statute, it says we have to have performance agreements and we have to have all these things in it. And, and you know, the, the, the gift card doesn't quite get there uh, under a tr traditional performance agreement sort of structure. Could it be considered part of the uh, promotional budget as a promotional sort of expense instead? It might. Um, I heard one community where they, you know, they had, they said, hey, businesses, if you advertise, you know, put signs up in your, your, your storefront or your building that said shop locally, and, and then maybe put it on your Facebook page, you know, something of that nature, that we would then, you know, provide a certain dollar amount of assistance through promotion. I think you could probably, they're, they're doing something in exchange for it. Um, uh, and, and so that, that, that I had, had a better comfort level with that sort of arrangement, I guess. Uh, so there may be a way to get there with promotion. I mean, and normally promotion, you, you, yeah, you do an advertisement. So you have a, a contract that says, hey, we're going to advertise on this billboard or, or in this magazine or in this newspaper. And, and you have some sort of written agreement as to what you're getting. And, and so that's what, you know, it is contemplated by even promotional expenditure, some sort of written agreement as to what the bargain for exchange is for the monies that are being provided. The only thing to remember too is, I think, um, and Phyllis is on the call, I think, I think we have like 70,000 left in that line item. But that line item has to be 10% of your budget. It can't exceed 10%. Is that right, Jeff? That, that, that's correct. State law imposes a 10% of your annual revenue, uh, uh, sales tax revenue, as, as a cap on promotional expenditures. Right. And so right now we have like 70000 left, which sounds great. But, um, you know, over the next two months, we're going to be determining what the impact of um, what happened in March and April will be on sales tax. So as that sales tax number drops, so does that percentage of that amount that we can have in that line item. So I just want to be cognizant of that when we commit 
So like Colleyville did a $35 gift card, I think to each household. And I think when I do the math, that's like $70,000 for that mailing, if we did that amount. So just numbers. Well, is there a way to do a combination? Because one of my concerns is doing it as a project under our incentives. Um, you know, Jeff mentioned the 60 days and all the performance, individual performance agreements. It just feels like we wouldn't be able to get any money in anybody's hands until July. What, and then, and did yes, I sorry, misunderstand sorry. that? No, go ahead, Jeff. Well, no, no there, there is a 60 day requirement. And for one client community, what we did to address the 60 days is we acknowledge that if the governor waives any of the requirements, you know, those requirements will be waived. For the 60 day, we, we included a provision that says, you know, the applicant signs a performance agreement that when they could get open, they get open, they would maintain the jobs, they would report the jobs. And after a certain time frame, you know, it's, you know, it's over, and it's their money, and they don't have to repay it. But we addressed the 60 day by saying, applicant, you understand if we did get a petition and the 60 days, if I, if I should explain that, is that you, you publish in the paper the project and then tech, you know, under state law, you have to wait 60 days before you, you fund it because it gives the, the voters a 60 day window to get a petition together to object to the project. And if they object to the project, then it has to go to, you know, if they get the requisite number of signatures, it has to go to a vote at a, a uniform election date, May or November. It's never happened in the history of 4B, but it, it's, it's, it's been on the books uh, and it was written for the ballpark in Arlington and the city of Arlington, which was the first uh, 4B project. So it, it's still a requirement, but how we address it, we say in the application, if, you, if we do get a petition meeting the requirements, then applicant, you agree to repay those monies immediately. And so that's a way, yeah, we'll, we'll get the money out in advance, but contractually, if we ever saw it, we'd be the first to see a petition, but if we saw it, they would repay it immediately. So that's a way, you know, given, given this pandemic to, you know, to get money out, but contractually they're obligated to pay it back if, if we did get the petition. All right, that's really helpful and good to know. I think one of the things that I liked specifically, I think it was the Rowlett program I may be misquoting that, but one of the programs specifically addressed mortgage slash lease assistance. And so, you know, there are some businesses that obviously can't open right now and maybe they don't, aren't able to do to go food because they're not a food business or what have you. And so I think it would be nice if we could dedicate part of the incentive budget to a specific program like what we're discussing, but I also like the idea of doing some smaller portion of the promotional services, maybe do a $20 gift card that gets us down to 50,000, Susan, and that helps us not bump up against that $70,000 um, cap. It, it's 70,000. Jeff, can you tell me, so if at the beginning of the budget, it's 10%, but if we if revenues go down, do we have to keep adjusting that down to match? Technically, yes, that it should be adjusted that, you know, the state law requirement is 10% of your annual revenue. So if you budget, uh, yeah, let's say for a million dollars, so you budget a, a hundred thousand for, for, you know, promotion and you only bring in 800,000 for that year, technically that, during the budget, you know, a budget amendment throughout the year that we that number should be reduced down to 10% of the 800,000 or, or 80,000. That's what I thought. So, I mean, let's just keep that in mind, though. So say we're at 70,000 and the scenarios that I ran for council for the mid year budget, we had already decreased at 10,000, but that was for what happened in the past. Mm -hmm. So I did scenarios running 25% decrease, 50% decrease. Those are probably pretty aggressive, but honestly, we won't know until like May 11th 
we'll get our first shot over the bow of what the, what the impact of the closures had in March. So say it's 25%, then we need to take that remaining, I'm just using very rough numbers, that remaining 70 and cut 25% off of that. Um, so All right, so that's why I was saying target 50,000 as a potential cap for the remaining for the remaining we amount. Have no money left for the rest of the year for promotions, which that's up to you guys, but I just want to make sure you know that, that anything else that came up, that's normally where you kind of cover those opportunities. Now, are there going to be a lot? I don't know. We don't know what the summer is going to bring, right? But well, the other thing to think about with the gift cards is that's if 100% of them are redeemed. Yes. You're so, right. you know, you're going to have a certain percentage that are lost or forgotten or whatever. So if we budget it, if we had 50,000 in gift cards potentially distributed, um, I doubt that we'd have 100% redemption. So there'd be some wiggle room there. I'm just trying to figure out a way to capture sort of both audiences. So. I, I wouldn't want to go 100% gift card. I'd be go, okay going 100% grants because I think you're going to get the most bang for the buck and the people that need it the most are going to jump at it and apply. Um, if we do gift cards, to me, it should be no more than 50% of whatever the funding we're going to do happens to be because it's going to take longer to get out there it's going to take longer and then it's going to be the business having to accept it as opposed to just accepting cash and then they got to submit it back to the town and get reimbursed so um, yeah you're right it may eventually be a lengthier process if we're able to circumvent the 60 days with um the language all these other, that Jeff mentioned. All these other towns have circumvented it somehow you know i mean 60 days you know, nothing was shut down in mid-February, so it was March before stuff started getting shut down. So, and a lot of these programs have been in place for two weeks already. I like the idea of a combination of both because they do target different needs. I What I like about a gift card is that it's not only a little bonus for the residents, but it's also an encouragement for the residents to get out and about and shop when they can and how they can. And if they don't have a really, you know, I saw, I think the Coleyville one expired like the end of April, but if we didn't do an expiration date or did a longer one, then it would give um, residents an opportunity to use them at nail salons or places like that when they are able to open again. If I may, Susan or, or Burton, did, did we already publish notice for the six, to start the 60 days? Yes. Yes. Okay, and when did we do that? Uh, last Thursday. Okay. So, I mean, it, it's 60 days, technically it's 60 days from that date that, uh, you know, like I said, on, on, on the agreements, I think contractually we can kind of address that issue to get monies out quickly under, under a performance agreement sort of scenario. So once we need to, um, Kind of we've had a lot of discussion, so just a reminder that we're actually on the public hearing section, but I mm -hmm. kind of agree with you, like, let's make sure this is what we want to do before we have a public hearing and vote on creating the incentives. So we're kind of moving a little backwards, which is good. But just note that we need to hold a public hearing at some point, and right. so you do have some callers who called in. Has anyone raised their hand yet? They have not. You want to remind them how to do that? Uh, press, oh, we have one hand raised. I'm going to unmute caller ending in number 453. You've been unmuted. You're allowed to talk at this time. Thank you. Thank you for being. This is Wade. Uh, I'm assuming you can hear me. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So I uh, am just really trying to gather information in preparation for the council discussion tonight. So some of this is obviously new to me. Uh, but some of the questions that I had, I think some of them have been answered. Uh, it sounds like we really don't know yet what the, the management of the process is going to be, who's going to do that, how we're going to handle that. Uh, the 
assuming that it was going to be a program similar to the, the PPP or the IDL, uh, the regulations or applications for it. Uh, I did hear some comments earlier about uh, um, chain restaurants did not participate or somebody decided chain restaurants in some city did participate. Uh, and I wondered about other public companies in our town, uh, those perhaps who have participated in the PPP or the EIDL, uh, they're getting a lot of flack in the media about uh, becoming small businesses when they're public companies. So I didn't know about that. Uh, I did some inventory here, uh, kind of like the credit card situation, but if we take out the uh, um, chain restaurants, I think we only have four left, uh, if I'm correct. Uh, we might throw the donut store in there, which of course closed in April, and I don't know if they're going to open back up in May or not. Uh, so the amount of small businesses that we have uh, are not numerous. Uh, we could clean include the cleaners. Um, you could include the, the little pharmacy down there. Uh, I don't know where doctors and dentists get looked at, nor do I know where some of the smaller industrial companies get look, looked at, but they also could be participating in the PPP or the IDL. Um, and should they be able to take both? So some, some questions there. I think from the public standpoint, uh, I think the first thing that grabbed my attention was the $100,000. Uh, that was a lot of money uh, that comes out of sales tax. Um, majority of these businesses, especially if you exclude the pandas and the subways and the QTs and those kinds of businesses, don't pay sales tax. Uh, possibly even the uh, nail salons and hair salons uh, don't pay sales tax. So it's a great way to incentivize business, but uh, we're using sales tax that we don't have a way to replace. And our sales tax is going to go down, as you know, because of lack of ability to um, generate as much business. So just some thoughts is... Uh, as we prepare for the council side of the meeting, I may obviously bring these up again tonight, but I wanted to hear perhaps how those uh, would play out. Cause that takes, you know, any money we spend here takes away from park, new business, those kinds of things that are gonna be possibly hampered by um, the lack or the reduction of sales tax over a several, several months here. So thanks for letting me put some comments in there. All right, be here if you have any questions. Can I respond? Am I allowed to respond? Yeah, I mean, you can respond. It's not a public forum, so okay. I mean, it's if part of the discussion. Um, I just wanted to say that in the email that I sent to Susan and Burton today, my opinion was that we should, if we did a gift card, we should not limit it to just small businesses that we would include chains because for us, having QT or uh, Panda is also important because we're in the early stages of development. So uh, we want our residents to support those businesses as well. And I was not thinking uh, limiting it. I was thinking keeping it as unlimited as possible. And even potentially, you know, um, auto service places, you know, other places. But of course, those would be something we'd have to figure out what our uh, parameters would be. And I, I appreciate your input, Jim. That's helpful. Um, I too am concerned in terms of the. I want you to believe we should do something, but in comparing to the list that was sent to us of um, other towns and stuff, like the city of Georgetown is doing 100,000 total from its EDC to match another 100,000 from their chamber. Well, they're 
you know, what, 10, 15 times larger than we are. Um, and then the Rowlett one, but it's structured in a very similar way to the Rowlett one. I don't know what the maximum cap is on Rowlett. Um, they just have up to 10,000 um, and it's pretty straightforward. Um, but to me, if we identify what the max dollar amount is, and 100 was put in there, obviously, so we had room to go up to that in case we decided that made sense. But if necessary, when we agree to do something less, we can. Um, to me, though, I'm really curious about the 60 days, because how are all these other cities in Dallas doing it? And have already done it when there's no way they did it with 60 days. Yeah, I think they did what Jeff suggested, which is just put that in the performance agreement, right, Jeff? That's right. Also, you know, a lot of them are 4As, and 4As do, do not have the 60-day requirement. Okay, yeah, so that was so that, That's about half 4A. of them. So. <clears throat> yeah, yeah for, 4B has, has that requirement, but um, yeah, I think some may have a kind of contractually put something in there to address the 60 days. The e and this is Terry Shatter. The email that Susan sent um, with different examples of programs, and I'm, I have to go into each one, but one of them talked about how they got around the 60 days, which is what Jeff is saying. So, or all the different restraints. I don't remember which one that was. Do you, Susan? Probably Bass Drop. This Bass Drop. That okay. one was written like a 40 page legal document. So <laughs> it was probably that. Right. But I mean, just, just the page that talks about how they got around the, you know, the 60 days and all the different constraints. So. Yeah, they had the performance agreement. So. Yeah. So there's a number of people that haven't spoken up. I'm just, you know, what's the general, or maybe we move into the public hearing, but it sounds like we want to do something we just don't know exactly what i mean javier you're with wanting to do something or waiting to hear what floats your boat or the same thing for mark and honestly up. i'm um I'm torn. Um, one, we don't have to do anything, right? This is more of a, what we feel is the right thing to do for our local businesses, right? Correct. Yeah, I, I'm torn because we have a lot of priorities and um, granted, um, a lot of them rely on, or all of them rely on sales tax revenue. Um, and I'm, I know there's other programs out there. Uh, Jim was mentioning some of them, I believe, from federal government and state government, I assume. Uh, I don't know much about them, so I wonder what this double, if there is the idea of double dipping, and, you know, should we really be in the business of helping businesses that don't produce sales tax revenue? And, just what our, our charter is, you know, quality of life. Granted, a lot of these places that don't produce sales tax revenue improve our quality of life. Um, so I, I'm kind of torn, to be honest. So I'm not, I'm looking for the, I guess the, um, the obvious answer that, yeah, we need to, uh, put something out there to help these businesses, but if it's not within the next 60 days, I, I don't know how much help it's really going to be, you know? Thank you. That, all the same, similar thoughts I've had as well. Yeah, I would agree with what, uh, Javier saying, and also Councilmember Wade, you know, we only got what's basically 50 something days before we can actually make this happen, and they're going to start lifting restrictions in two weeks, a little over two weeks. Not much we can do about it. And also, you know, 
to Councilmember Wade's point, there's not that many businesses we can really incentivize directly to actually have tax um, that we get tax from. So, I mean, I like the idea and I want to keep businesses open and keep them thriving around here, but I kind of feel like a little bit of handicaps, a little bit of you know, handcuffs. So, question, um, you know, for when we incentivize new businesses to come to Sunnyvale, could we do something that is incentivizing businesses to stay here that do need it, that are on the ropes and that could really get aid from, from something like this, so it's not something so wide scale, but just existing customers that, uh, existing businesses that are, as we come out of this lockdown, feel that they're not gonna make the next, you know, 90 days or something that they could apply for something to, to help them make it longer term. Um, so I don't know if that's something we're even uh, allowed to do. I know we do it for new businesses, but how about for existing businesses to, to stay in Sunnyvale? No, I, th I think we could legally. That comes under the uh, job retention. And so, um, it, yeah, if we, these business, the current businesses, uh, w when they can get open and then stay open for a certain time frame, then yeah, we, we could be assisting the, these current, uh, uh, you know, current businesses in, in, in the community. So does our current application that we have for, is, is it just for new businesses? I, I have to pull it up, but if it's not, couldn't we encourage those few businesses that would maybe qualify on a program if they were wide scale to, to, to say, look, we don't have a program, but you could apply for our existing program that we have and, and uh, would love to help you stay in Sunnyvale. Um, I think our existing program is specifically for new businesses because one of the rules is, is to apply for it. You have to not have done anything on your business yet. But I could be wrong. And then we'd have to do individual projects, I think. So yeah. if we identify what the grant program would be, then people could apply to that program that we've already approved if we approve something. God dang it. I think that that was kind of the thought with this with this program is it was going to create a separate bucket that would just be more for business retention not new businesses and and that you know in order to do that we need to advertise it we need to make it a project which we've done now um, so it's more you know, I, I think that what your objective is, is to retain businesses that are already here who might be struggling because if they're going to go to the trouble of doing this, they're probably needing the funds and in order to keep their doors open. So, I mean, I think that was kind of the point of this is to try to reach those people who, you know, really in order for us to retain their business, you know, and I think you guys have latitude in who do you target? Is it a certain number of employees? Is it businesses that have been open a certain amount of time? I mean, I think you can have parameters where you frame those kinds of businesses. I know um, Council Member Wade, you know, brought up the question of publicly owned businesses versus privately owned. And, you know, I think you do have to think about like, I don't know the, the chain restaurants that we do have in town. Are they individual franchisees because if we have failures on any of those it's going to be very hard to recruit more franchisees if any of them fail um, so those are just some things i think to think about if you want to do something to retain businesses because that's what i think this is intended to do but you know again there's, you, there's nothing saying you have to do something that's kind of the discretion right. of this board. So if we do the program, um, who reviews the application and says yay or nay, uh, if we don't have clear guidelines, is that gonna be 4B doing it or uh, you, Susan, who? Well, 
Well, I, I think that, that was that was Council Member Wade's question, and I think Burton brought that up as well. I mean, you could have it either model where you know you um, you could come up with some guidelines that are pretty you know firm in terms of here's who we're targeting, here's who could get funding. You know, try to make it as simplistic as possible so that staff could administer that. If you don't have a lot of variables, I mean, I think if you're going to have a lot of variables like we have with our new business incentives, I think we would need to bring it back to you. But if it's pretty clear cut, I think staff could administer those and, you know, report out to you guys periodically, you know, at every meeting what we're, what we're seeing. Jeff, would you agree with that? I, I, I do agree. Um, and, and while we've been talking, I've been trying to put together maybe uh, some motion language that I'll sh shoot to uh, you, Susan and Burton, um, and ho hopefully y'all can disseminate that to the board. And that could be one of the, the, the issues that, uh, that you know, okay, how do these get approved? Who does every one of these come back to the board for your approval? Do, uh, is it the, you know, the president, uh, you know, is it Burton? Is it Susan? Is it a combination? You all approve them? And that that'll be part of city council's discussion as well, I think, because you know the, the the city council gets to approve every expenditure, and so some communities are saying, well, the city they're approving the hundred thousand if if that's the number, and so they've approved the expenditure, and they don't have to approve every application. Some other communities they might say, well, no, we want to approve every application. As city council, we want to approve every application, and and they could do that too. But and so that's. I guess for the council meeting, you know, how much oversight do they want to exercise? Is it just approving a hundred thousand and let or whatever that number is and letting the board figure out who approves each app, you know, application. Uh, and, and so that, that could be part of the motion, you know, tonight that uh, is the total board going to meet to approve these? Is it going to be uh, uh, maybe I don't want to say committee, but uh, you know, certain individuals that will approve them and, and get the agreement signed to get them out. Uh, and so that, that could be part of the, the, uh, the approval. Yeah. Like on the um, Cedar park, you know, there's this kind of a one page, what the requirements are, what your eligibility or application requirements and eligibility who's not eligible and what the maximum is you could get. And it has a grant, you know, to 5,000 and a loan if you wanted to do a larger amount, but it's, it's only, it's capped at 10,000. Um, some of the other ones were like $2,500, you know, and I don't know how far that goes, but it's more than nothing. Um, but, Depending on the size of the business and what all they're up to, you know, to me, five thousand dollars probably adequate to help offset a couple of months rent or one month rent, depending on, or one week rent, depending on where they're at, or mortgage. Like some of that stuff's written, but you know, when you get into the employee retention and all that kind of stuff, it to me it gets too complicated. This is Terry. Yes, I agree with what you're saying, Eric. And I think that we could decide on a certain amount and don't do any more than 5,000 and then have a committee of maybe Burton and you and a council member and Susan that approves them. I think it'd be too hard for all of 4B and all of council to try to approve them and get it done in a timely manner. Yeah, I agree. Terry, did you mean fifty thousand? I mean, yes. No, well, no, we, yeah, we pick a total. Yeah, I, I meant five five thousand total grant, but we pick a total and just have council approve that, like yeah. Jeff was saying, and then have a committee uh, approve the individual applications. And I think application as simple as possible. And I did email the board an example of this bingo thing that the chamber is going to do. Just FYI, I think it's going to be great because it's requiring people to uh, do things with our local businesses to mark off a square to win a, a restaurant gift card. 
and and I would include the chain restaurants on this chamber thing as well. Right. That's pretty neat. The other thing it eliminates is a lot of these that I was reading, the business had to be there for at least a year. Well, you know, Kearney's hadn't been here a year, have they? <laughs> so, you know, they'd be eliminated from if you did that one year limit. <laughs> I guess they've been under construction for that long. <clears throat> But I, I agree with Javier and uh, Jim Wade about um, them not producing sales tax, and I'd like to see what like K. Paul or Mark or Ms. Bradford, what some of you think. This is K. Paul. I'm not so hung up on the whether or not somebody generate sales tax or not. They're an entity in our town that we need to support. I'm just wondering what the quickest way to skin this cat is. If we could just make a motion to to set aside fifty thousand dollars to be determined later and and kind of leave it at that so we don't get into the minutia of of how to break it out. If I may add, um uh, Susan and Burton I, I sent you some motion language that I just forwarded it to them. Okay, and I guess that's part of, one, we're still on a public hearing. I think we're still on one. Yeah. So we probably probably need to make sure if there's any more public comment out there or to get the public hearing input and, and then move to number two or E2. And and that motion that, that uh, is some of the items I think that you want to address, you know, if, if you want to do, you know, kind of the performance agreement project model what's the the maximum uh, financial assistance let's say per job you know the business is going to generate x amount of jobs how much is the maximum per business per application how much can they receive then how long should that agreement be you know and that, that kind of it's based on how many how much money you're providing if it's uh, you know, if it's 10,000 it's probably a longer term but you, you can only help 10 people with you know 100,000 if it's it's twenty five hundred dollars, yeah, obviously that you may have a shorter time, and, and then yeah, who who how how is the approval going to work on the applications? Is it coming back to the full board? Is it a committee? And so th those are kind of the components I put in that motion that I think is being sent around to you. And, and then the, from the other discussion, you know, about promotional expenditures, it, it, it's kind of blank here in what I sent around, but you know, is there a certain dollar amount that you want to use for promotion? And then how how is that going to work? Is it is that's where that other blank is in the motion? Is and, you know, is it th these gift cards we're talking about? Is it you know, some other program? And, and so that that was my thoughts on trying to get a uh, you know some motion language that can get direction. Uh, you know how how to proceed from here. Um, but yeah, we are in the public hearing first, so I would ask that we just kind of, uh, you know, if there is, you know, get any more public comment and then maybe move to E2. Well, don't we need to actually approve the project first before we talk about the specifics or no? Well, I think uh, we have um, e, D1 is just to get the public input and then consider, you know, what we're going to do and then E2 is the action. Yeah, number one said to act upon the resolution to approve the project. So I was just confused. And the project specifically said the 100,000 and it was attached to D1. Okay. Uh, yeah, nonetheless, if we're still in one, I guess, um, I guess we're kind of covering two then right now. Uh, or no point in passing one if we're not willing to pass too so that's what i meant about we're kind of moving a little backwards just mm -hmm. before we pass one i want to make sure you're willing to pass two but we could start with one if you want if that would okay. help just to go ahead and pass the resolution dedicating it to a project that and you could set an amount it doesn't have to be hundred thousand we put a hundred thousand just as a not to exceed 
You could right. set a different amount if you'd like. And I'm it's under. specifically 100000 from the incentive budget. Yes, ma'am. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Because we don't need and how much project for oh, sorry for promotional expenses we don't have to declare a project that's why sir yeah. we could do not to exceed a hundred thousand how much money do we have in our incentive budget we've got four hundred thousand left okay ish um, there may be some committed numbers that I just don't have in front of me. Um, Sarah, Sarah, this is Phyllis. Uh, we have four hundred and six thousand dollars left in that incentive line item, but we are making a mid-year adjustment to it. So once that mid-year adjustment comes through, there won't be quite that much left in the incentive. Yeah, We're making I'm a ninety-six thousand one hundred and twenty-five dollar adjustment to it. So. Yeah, I was looking at that uh, ending number with that adjustment included of 403,000, but I guess what you're saying is we've already spent 93, so that brings us down to closer to 300,000 then. That's, that's correct. Okay. So can we do it where if we said, you know, approved up to X amount, um, but have it in two tiers or something where once we identify what the dollar amounts are, that you could potentially fund, you know, as you said, not to exceed, doesn't mean you have to do all of it, but pending level of applications, you know, you could extend it or something else without having to go back and do a new project. So if we said $50,000 with the first application requirement being what, May 5th for whatever reason or whatever the date is, but by that date, you only have 25,000, you know, you don't have to extend it and do the second batch unless the second batch comes through. But um, to me, 100,000 is a high number for a town of our size compared to looking at all these other towns. But when you think yeah, about it, I'll if look. you use the $5,000 cap, 100,000 is only gonna cover 20 businesses. If they all yeah, I was still, looking at it. Still not much. I was looking at if we did 50k and we did 20 2500, then we that would be 20 businesses. Would we get 20? I don't know, but we could certainly lower the grant to 2500 to right. cover more businesses. But then you have to wonder what look, impact is that 2500 going to have because that's not even going to be part of someone's lease. <laughs> even in a thousand square foot um, space, the average price per square foot in Sunnyvale is close to $30 a square foot. So we're not even covering somebody, one month of a lease payment was $2,500. So I don't know. <clears throat> it's tough, because I agree. I don't want to spend so much money out of our budget, but at the same time, I want it to be impactful. So I'm kind of following some of the other comments about being on the fence. So do you guys want to move on to actually holding the public hearing and voting on the resolution for creating the project and then go to on the second item discussing the parameters? Or do you feel like does somebody ready to make a motion, but first we do need to actually open the public hearing, I think. Yeah, I don't know if we're ready to make a motion, but we can open them because we're not in consensus on what to do. Um, <laughs> but we can open a public hearing for additional comment. Do we need to close the public forum? I don't know that you call for public hearing. No, yeah, just like we need to open the public hearing, take any public input, and uh, and then after that, close the public hearing, and then whatever action you want to take on number one. Okay. I guess we'll open public hearing item D on the agenda. 
Hold the public hearing, discuss, consider, and act upon resolution 20-33, a resolution of the 4B Economic Development Corporation of the town of Sunnyvale, Texas, to approve a project for 4B to provide funding for COVID-19 incentive to local businesses in an amount not to exceed 100,000 in compliance with section 505.158 of the Texas Local Government Code. One hand is currently raised for public comment. I'm going to unmute the, well, the person with the phone number ending in 453 is unmuted. You can go ahead and speak. Yeah, thank you, Joseph. This is Jim Wade again. Uh, Eric, I like the uh, the Cedar Park thing. It, it seems to be very concise and very uh, to the point. I'm not sure how well it fits with Sunnyvale. Uh, recognizing some of the requirements of one year, as you mentioned before. It also requires the business to have submitted their SBA or their financial institution loan application. I don't know how many of those in our town has submitted something. I suspect a few have, but I'm not suspecting that many have. Uh, They've got to prove the uh, reduction in revenue. Uh, that could be uh, somewhat difficult for them. But more importantly, with the number that you choose, if you know it's Cedar Park, it's a $5,000 grant and then a loan up to 10,000. Now, we gotta be careful about how many would just get a grant uh, because if we had 10 apply, which could very easily happen with nail salons and uh, and you assume they meet all the other requirements, then your 50,000 is gone. That means there's no loans. Uh, so just think about that number. Uh, I, I hate to think that it needs to be larger, but I'm also trying to find out how we can get our businesses to, to qualify uh, following the Cedar Park requirements. And, you know, we do have to have some requirements. Just, uh, I'm concerned about that. Thanks. Thank you, Jim. Any other comments? There are no other hands raised at this time. Yeah, and I, I agree with the comments that are made. Um, because, again, I don't know what the right answer is. Uh, but I like their format. It's, it's much simpler than some of the other ones. And other than the Rowlett one seems the simplest. I guess barring no other comments, we'll close the public hearing, move on to Item E, discuss action item, discuss, consider, and act upon specifications and guidelines for 4B COVID-19 business incentive project in response to economic impacts to Sunnyvale businesses as a result of the current pandemic. Yeah, I think I caused some confusion. <laughs> if you wanna act on the resolution under D1 first, and then my motions, the, the my motion language is probably more applicable for E2 uh, in that, you know, what are the, what are the, the parameters? So on D1, you can, we need you to vote on the resolution and creating this as a project. And the only thing other that you would have to decide at this point is what's the max amount you want to dedicate to this. I've heard 50,000 and I've heard 100,000. So just whoever makes the motion needs to, set what you feel the max amount that we would spend for the total project would be. There's still a couple members that I'd like to hear from before we decide if we want to even make a motion on the project. I don't know where everyone's at or can I do that? Can we do that? And so Bradford, Anthony, Torres, and Eldridge have spoken. Well, everybody's spoken. Oh, okay. I just, I guess I missed Sarah and Mark. So, yep. okay. Mark kind of echoed 
um, Javier in terms of okay. how impactful can we be? Um, K Paul, gotcha. you are, it, it sounded like you want it to be simple and impactful and whatever helps get dollars into people's hands as quickly as possible, I believe. Um, yes. Bradford and Anthony kind of like the two phased approach of potentially having the cards and potentially having the grants, but we're all struggling with what the right dollar amount is if we do anything. Um, I think I could live with 50,000 under the circumstances. My question back earlier was, and, and maybe I was confusing in it, but if we say no more than 50,000 and then we just find out we need 65 or something, we have to get back together and vote. Is there a way to make it kind of a two tiered system to where we set within the parameters phase one up to X amount, but then we've approved a higher amount in case we need it? If I may, yeah, if the published notice said 100,000, you're fine. Just you would need to prove the extra fifteen thousand at a meeting, and that that's all you would need to do. We've already got it published for a hundred, and so yeah. It just uh, if tonight's action is just to prove fifty, and now you want to bump it to sixty-five, it, it would just take a board meeting, and I guess also council approval uh, to go from fifty to you know to sixty-five. Okay. So it doesn't require another 60 days or anything. It would just be, hey, we've got a larger response than. Yeah, based on our publication, we've got it up to 100. So, uh, or I presume that's the case, Susan. Uh, yeah. I think it was for 100. And so, yeah, we've got it covered from that aspect. Okay. Would the resolution, Jeff, need to be passed at 100? And then um, item two is where they would direct us to spend less in the first round. It could be, sure. I mean, okay. but I think if, if the motion there is 50, then we would still need to have another meeting for the council to, or excuse me, the board to approve that extra 15,000. In that example. Because in E2, they're saying just 50. Uh, so yeah, we, we, need, we would need some sort of approval to get for that 15,000 increase. Okay. Have we actually had uh, any businesses contact the town, Susan? Not that you have to name names or give specifics, but I'm just curious if we've had anyone reach out to us specifically during this time. I've had two businesses reach out to me personally. One was a, a salon owner and it was really about when am I gonna get to reopen? And I think it was like somebody who leased space in that bigger building that's up on Beltline. Um, you know, they have like a small studio inside of that bigger building. I don't know if you've ever been in that building. Um, so that one and then one other business. And then, like I said, we've had our library calling every business. This spreadsheet, that, this big spreadsheet, there's three pages of businesses. and. You know, this was a good exercise because it showed us that we didn't have phone numbers for a lot of them. So we did reach out, try to get phone numbers, but obviously the ones that are closed aren't really answering their phones. So of the ones we reached out to, only a few, like we said, how can we help you? What do you need from us? And nobody said anything specific, like we need a grant like is happening in Rowlett or whatever. Um, and, but some of them said, I don't know how you could help, but we do need help. So, um, and that was just a few of them. A lot of them just said, you know, no, we're okay. Some of them said, hey, we were really busy at first. Now it's slowing down. Um, and a few said, yeah, we could use help, but we don't really know what that would look like. So, um, you know, that's, it's kind of a mixed bag. It, I kind of expected to see overwhelming, yes, we need help with rent, or yes, we need grants like other communities are doing, but maybe they haven't heard of what others are doing, you know, so didn't even know to ask for that. Um, but I really had hoped to hear specific asks, and, and we didn't. But again, we didn't get to talk to as many as I would have liked. 
just because of difficulties reaching businesses or them kind of being a little, probably a little suspicious of somebody at this time, you know, you know, reaching out to them, you know, probably not knowing, you know, if it's safe to divulge information or whatever. I think one of them said that. So, I mean, that's as much as I've gotten. Burton, have you gotten anybody reaching out? It's probably the same people. The same people. We did get a lot of, uh, a lot of the contacts we were making were frontline employees that were hesitant to pass uh, any contact info on for maybe the actual business owner. Uh, like Susan said, people weary of scams and, uh, mm, yeah. you know, I know that Matthew and I, in the phone calls we made, tended to have a whole lot more success dialing in from uh, phones here at, at Town Hall or the library versus trying to reach out on our cell phones coming in from a different area code. So. Yeah. Okay, thanks. I was just curious. <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe we make a motion to a pass the resolution up to fifty thousand um, dollars, just so that we've got something out there in case anyone needs help that we're at least showing that we're trying to help our current businesses? I don't know. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, we can pass the motion, then we've got to figure out the details in the next step. But to me, I think 50,000, again, based on looking at the size of some of these other towns in relation would be a good starting place. And if we had to increase it, we could go back in the future. But. So I'll make a motion that we passed, if I'm saying this right, resolution uh, 20.33, um, not to exceed $50,000. Motion made by member Shatter. I'll second it, Mayor Cash. Seconded by member Cash. All those in favor, please state your name individually. Anthony. Cash. I heard Shatter. Anthony and Cash. Shatter. Bradford. Bradford. Torres. Torres. Eldridge. Eldridge and Wise passes unanimously. Then we move on to the next phase, which is figuring out the details. So discuss, consider, and act upon specifications and guidelines for 4B COVID-19 business and incentive projects in response to economic impact as a result of the current pandemic. Um, do you guys want to consider loans or just consider grants? And I maybe ask the staff that question because I don't, Hey, it involves a lot more work. Yeah, Jeff, did you say that you're okay with a grant that has contingencies on it? Or right, you know, for example, if it's, uh, uh, you know, we do an agreement, let's say it's for a year, and they just say they're going to get open, they're going to, you know, create the jobs, keep them open for a year, and keep the, you know, that number employed for the year, then the agreement's over, they don't have to pay it back. So it, it, it's, a grant is more, we just give them money and, and there's no strings. We, 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 we wanna make sure that they're doing the economic development. And, and so yeah, grants are fine, conditioned upon that they do job retention. Yeah, I mean, that seems pretty straightforward to me. Um, what Jeff just described of, you know, if they apply for a grant, and even if they use it to pay rent, it still can be tied to the retention of the employee because you can't have an employee, even if it's yourself, if you don't have a place for them to work, right? 
stuff. So right, and, and we don't have to put strings on how they spend the money. Right. You know, if whatever that amount is, you know, that they get the check, and however they best think to spend it, you know, that that's up to them. We just need them to keep the jobs in place. So that seems pretty, because I too share your concerns, Mr. Weiss, about you know not making this too administratively cumbersome with one person who's also the parks director. So um, I mean I, I'm very sensitive to that. So I think that's pretty simple, you know that you know any grant we get, we have ongoing reporting, you know periodically to make sure we're in compliance with what we committed to to get the grant. So, I mean, I like that. It seems pretty simple. So, effectively, it sounds like a forgivable loan grant system. Yeah. Right. And if they went out of business, which is obviously you hope not, but if they go out of business, odds are you can't collect it anyways. Correct. Um, but it would be worded in such a way that it's a forgivable loan if you meet requirements <laughs> one, two, and three or whatever. And I've got to apologize. I'm looking at that motion I sent around, and I should have said interim executive director in part of my part of that motion language. I'm looking at it. I guess that's what I get for typing too fast. Don't um, give them any ideas, Jeff. I apologize, Susan. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was not intended. <laughs> So what um, parameters do you guys want? I mean, number of employees. That's complicated. Do we know how many employees each business has? Or I guess they, they could they'd say, yeah, I had 10 out. before. Yeah, they'd have to fill out some. Right, so they fill out the form and say, okay, we have two employees, when in reality they had 10 before this thing started. There's no way for us to check. What if we go well, under the two? agreement, they would report them. And, you know, we, we can ask for certain workforce commission or IRS quarterly reports they do. So there's a, a way to, that they would have to report them. Okay. And what if we skip number one and go to number two and say um, maximum of five thousand dollars per application, and number three a term of twelve months, and number four the town manager, the interim economic development director, and the board president approves every agreement? Sounds good to me. So, do you want all? All applicants, is it up to 5,000 or is it 5,000 for anyone who applies and it meets the criteria? Or do you want to have kind of like an escalation for this many employees, it's 2,500, and this many, it's 5,000? I'm just wondering, at 50,000, you're only going to be able to, you'll be able to do 10, which is. I'd rather have the escalation myself. Maximum. Yeah, maximum of yeah. 5K. And we may not even get 10, but at least we're trying yeah. to do something. Yeah. And then on the questionnaire, we can, that way tonight, I don't think we'd have to pick what the escalation points are, but like you said, if it says up to a maximum of 5,000, and then as we're figuring out the application form, and then if it's the three of us that are reviewing it, or if there's a council member on the, board as well we could identify what that what goes on that application gives you the flexibility anyway right i like that you want a motion Um, did we already clarify that we were not going to require the business to have been in place for 12 months? Like some of the, like some of the other ones did? If we go with this setup, other than deleting the um, dollar amount per job, yeah, it wouldn't have the one year in there. Okay. 
it and it, would that application application part be something that would be figured out later? Is not part of the motion. Correct. I don't know because that's the data okay. gathering part. Um, unless anybody wants to put restrictions in there on 100% Sunnyvale based business or stuff like that, you know. So I mean, again, I don't know what the various businesses are here. If you're a franchisee and you're in Sunnyvale, you're a Sunnyvale based business. But if you're a chain, you know, so that would be the only other thing is if we want to keep it the true small. You know, if I may, that, that could be part of the motion if that's one of the conditions. I've seen other communities, uh, the condition, you know, that for the bigger businesses that, you know, the, the, their, their focus is for the smaller businesses. So businesses with more than 25 employees were excluded you know that that could be part of the motion part of the motion could be anybody who's been in uh, in default of a current agreement with the edc or or town is ineligible and you know excluding the yeah it must the, must the be pandemic. in good standing with the town of sunnyvale that that could be part of the motion so yeah you could add to it uh, you know it's your pleasure but do we have to? Can that be part of the application that we decide to use? It, it, you don't have to put it, it does not have to be part of the motion either. Okay, okay so the key aspect we said up to 5,000. Term right. of agreement. Term of agreement, we could have all three in there because that could link back to the up to amount. And then as long as you guys that are might okay. Sure. I thought, I thought we said 12 months. I don't know. <laughs> That's probably simplest and eliminate the six and 24. Yeah. yeah. So do that. And then and I, I kind of kind of like the idea of saying so many employees are left so that it's a small business. Yeah, the standard on most of them was employees. 25. Rowlett was 20. <laughs> Okay. But, but then that will expressly exclude the pandas and so forth. Yeah, I think Kearney's I mean, unless you said FT, like full-time equivalents, because a right. lot of those will have part-time people. So, but like a Tino's, I mean, I don't know how many total employees they have, but it's probably more than 25. Well, it depends on if they're employees or contractors, because a lot of restaurants have a lot of independent contractors that aren't 1099. They're 1099. They're not W-2. Okay. Could we just say that we give priority to businesses with less than 25 so that we have some leeway? Sure. Yeah, I think that's going to need to be part of the determining how much of the up to 5,000 would be given and not something that we should expressly say in the motion. I think there's just too many what ifs around the number of employees. I agree. Yeah, I agree too. Sorry about that. I didn't think about them having restaurants having more than 25 employees. So are there other exclusions like home-based and nonprofits, those sorts of things? Some have put that in as well. Um, that you know, if you're a sole proprietor, uh, obviously getting back to work that's what everybody wants to do, and that's what you're going to do. And, and so, they're, they're really not doing anything in exchange. That sounds harsh, but they're not doing anything in exchange for the money's being provided. Whereas, a business that employs people, we're get, making them get those people back working, and, and they got to maintain those jobs. So, it's some have uh, precluded sole proprietors or you know uh, you know sole business person from being able to apply because they're, they're really not doing anything in exchange they're, they're going back to work and, and so there's not that bargain for exchange for the monies that are being provided okay So up to 5,000, 12 month term, the voting body, just three, is that 
adequate or should we add a council member or the council i guess could add a council member if they want to right yeah sure yeah okay so we don't have to put that in there if they want to they can add it um no home base no non-profit i miss anything sounds good to me Okay, well, I'll make a motion to yep. approve the COVID-19 program with the following conditions. Maximum financial assistance not to exceed $5,000 per application. Term of agreement, 12 months. Voting board uh, for approval of applications will be the EDC board president, town manager, and interim EDC director. Um, no home based exclusions or home-based businesses and not-for-profits. Um, and evaluations will be made off of the application uh, as they're submitted. President Weiss, can you ask for public comment before y'all vote, please? The motion is made, but put on hold while we ask for public input and comment. There's no, no hands raised. Okay. So, Close the public comment. Motion. Is that hey Paul? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Seconded by member K Paul Cash. All those in favor, please state your name individually. Bradford. Anthony. Order. Chatter. Cash. Eldridge. And Wise passes unanimously. Barn any open items, which I don't believe there are, we will adjourn at 6.07 p.m. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you coming to the meeting. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.